Today we are going to be making homemade butter with heavy cream. This is one of our two favorite uses for cream here at Wisdom Preserved. Um, in no particular order, butter and whipped cream. Definitely a good, good use for if you have any extra cream laying around. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have room temperature cream. And we're gonna pour that into our KitchenAid. We've tried all kinds of different ways to make butter and this is by far our favorite. Now and this is a pint that yes, we just did. Yes, one pint of cream. You can actually do any amount up to, oh, I probably wouldn't do much more than a half gallon. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Probably. Well, plus the, the vessel and it's gonna splatter because yeah. we're gonna be mixing it for so yeah, long. Yeah, maybe so. even a quart yeah. would be my max for, for this particular device. We usually do it in sets of about a pint mm -hmm. around here, so. Yeah, so now you're gonna wanna turn on the KitchenAid and you turn it on at a fairly high speed. Uh, uh, what would you say? We've been doing well, I guess we start a little lower, like a four, yeah. and then as it starts to whip up more, then you can get it a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna wanna go until we notice it getting like a really, really thick whipped cream. Okay. And then at that point, we're gonna wanna switch to the flat beater. And for us, we don't know exactly why all of a sudden it works better, but it takes so much longer if we leave the whisk beater on than if we do this switch. Mm -hmm. You'll actually see um, as we do this. So um, it hang will tight go with us. to butter eventually yes. with the whisk beater. It'll just take a lot longer. A lot longer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hang tight with us. We watch this in fast forward as we do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna now switch to our flat. Right. Beater. At this point, we pretty much have whipped cream. Great. And if you've watched our whipped cream videos, you'll see that the KitchenAid is actually even faster than the hand beaters. You've seen the hand beaters, yeah, yeah. quite a bit. We get set in our in our ruts of how we've always done it. So oh we yeah, I the always video, do it with the video the using the hand mixer and then we were just noticing, oh, this made it way faster. Right, so if you have a KitchenAid, that it might be a better way for you to do that. Yeah. So now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and wait until we see that break, the yellow butter fat separated from the buttermilk. tell towards the end it really starts to splash out and you may need to turn your mixer down just a little bit as you get more liquid in there you can see our separation here is just perfect yeah no this looks really really good and didn't take that long to do no there are multiple different ways that you can do butter I mean I've even done butter in a container with like a coin in there and you shake, shake it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah. for agitation so we want to Pour off the buttermilk. Because we want to save that. Like Marie said, we have all sorts of recipes that uses buttermilk. And you want to just catch as much of your butter chunks as you can. And there we are. And it's not really that hard to separate them. I've heard of some people straining it, but I just don't really feel like that's necessary. I don't either. The next step that we need to do is we need to rinse it though. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to begin, this is get as cold yeah. of water as you can, pour it into your bowl. And what we're going to do is we need to get that extra amount of, of essentially the buttermilk out of there. And so we just move this around, mix it, squeeze it. And essentially you're diluting the buttermilk and the cold water causes the butter to solidify more. So it makes it a little bit easier to separate them. Then you'll wanna go ahead and pour off that liquid, especially since this is pretty so dark. dark, yeah. And you're going to see each time we do this, that the liquid gets clearer and clearer. I just kind of push it down and squeeze it 
turn it, move it around. You see how this time it's not quite so milky? We're getting it clearer. So you just want to continue repeating this step until your water is clear when you try to do it. Let's do one more. Make sure that you're cutting into the center of your butter if you can. So you kind of cut into the center and then you push it all back together mm -hmm. just to release any pockets that it might be holding of the buttermilk. That's looking really good. And see how I just kind of cut in and then I go around the edge, swoop it together. And then push it back. It's together. almost like kneading dough. And yeah, that looks really good. I think maybe one more time and then and then we'll be good with this one. Mm -hmm. There's no set number of times that you rinse it like this. You really just go until your water's clear. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Yeah, we're not getting much out this time around. Okay. Okay, so let's dump this last bit out. And so now is when you go ahead and you add your salt. For my family, we like just a pinch. Mm -hmm. And then you need to mix that salt in really good. You can taste it to see if it's as salty as you like. Um, it's really just kind of a seasoning to taste. It's, it's not a large amount that you need. And some people like unsalted butter. That's and true. And that's the case. Don't salt your butter at all. And it works better for certain recipes. Mm -hmm. So now that you have it done, you can go ahead and put it in a airtight container in the refrigerator or wrap it tightly in plastic and stick it in the freezer. Or your other option is to press it into little silicone molds right. and make little pads of butter. And so you see that we did that here. We have just molded it. Now if you have any questions for us, be sure to post them below. Bye.